What's up, guys? Today we're going to be talking about Cha-Ching, The Liar's Key by Mark Lawrence. So, guys, I know that last year, at the end of last year, I started this whole deal where we were going to go through the Broken Empire and the Red Queen's War side by side. Um, and I got a little derailed there, but you know what? We're back on track, baby, and I'm glad to bring this one to you. If you're a guy, you know, kind of like me, where you love the Broken Empire, but you might not have gone into the Red Queen's War trilogy yet, I'm telling you guys, you owe it to yourself to dive into this because it is brilliant and it adds so much to that world that you'll love. Let's get into it. After the events of Prince of Fools, we pick up with Grimdark's dynamic duo, Jalen Kendith and Snorri Versnagason. Now we have spent the winter up north uh, along with their hefty uh, Viking friend, Tutagu. Um, now also, the light and dark sworn sources have switched sides here on Jalen and Snorri, as well as uh, the group is in possession of a key, a magical key, one that has the possibility of opening anything. Now, as the group makes their way back south, they will grow in size, with additions uh, like a young orphan boy named Henan and an attractive vulva witch named Kara, that definitely has caught Jalen's eye. Now where our duo was once bound very tight, we will begin to see that bond begin to loosen up. Uh, because obviously, you know, we, we will have Snorri who is hellbent on his mission of finding the death's door, the door to death. And then we have Jalen who is really just ready to return to Red March. And to return to doing Jalen things. Just, you know, going back to being his nasty old self. Okay, so one of the first things I want to get into is the pacing of the book. Because this is one of uh, Mark Lawrence's longest books that I've read. Uh, maybe the longest one that he's written. But I will say, uh, you know, I think that there will be some people that will probably, especially rolling off of Prince of Fools, that might make a criticism in the pacing of the book. But I don't think it has bad pacing. I just don't think it's as fast paced uh, as Prince of Fools. When I was like reading this, I was kind of going, man, this, you know, that was one of the first things I noticed is it didn't start out as fast as Prince of Fools. And, you know, I, as I was reading through uh, The Liar's Key, I started to realize it didn't have pacing issues. It was really just a testament to how good uh, The Prince of Fools is, you know, like just coming out the gate swinging and just not stop swinging all the way to the end. Um, now, that doesn't mean that it's a better book than The Liar's Key. It's just it's structured in a way that really brings you on an exhilarating ride. Now, with The Liar's Key... Lawrence does take his time here and there to kind of cook up some situations, but when you look back, he's hit you with several things along the way, so there's certainly not a sloggy, uh, there's no real sloggy parts to the book. Along the way, you're constantly getting fed with something or getting hit with a new, you know, new situation as the characters are progressing through the narrative. The next thing I want to talk about is the characters. You know, specifically, let's start with Jalen because, you know, we're inside his head. Um, and Jalen is just a great grimdark uh, protagonist, especially one to be in his head because Jalen is kind of brutally honest. Like, he's very transparent and on honest with the reader. Like, when he shits on himself, like, it's like, you it's like you know the guy's telling the truth. Like, people don't say this kind of stuff to brag. It's like the kind of thing only, like, it's only an honest, like, observation of oneself, like, relayed back to another. In the most hilarious ways, too. So, and we saw that a lot in Prince of Fools, right? Like, one of my, like, you know, pros about that book was just how fucking funny it was. And Jalen Kendith certainly brings the laughs here in this book as well. Uh, one of my favorite lines in the book was when he says something like, it's like, animals are a great judge of character. They don't like me much. <laughs> Stuff like that all throughout the book. But I will say that I do think that uh, Mark Lawrence has begun to kind of like sow a little bit of an arc into Jalen here. Because he is, to his core, a coward, a misogynist. He's also kind of pompous at times, right? We've always seen him kind of bragging about his, like, being a prince and stuff. But, you know, throughout this journey, and then especially through, you know, maybe halfway through the book or whatever, when, when Jalen makes it back to Red March, Jalen is kind of making realizations. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, he might be a prince in Red March, 
But sometimes when he's amongst his, you know, his new friends, he feels more like a king. The other characters I want to talk about are the two female characters that I really enjoyed in this book. Um, the first one being Kara or Kara, um, the vulva witch, the attractive witch that has caught Jalen's eye. Now, she is a great character. For one, she doesn't have a flimsy voice. Like, she feels... Uh, like an individual and not just like background chatter um, as well as it just like she brings that dynamic to the group by being that attractive girl that's caught Jalen's eye it creates tension and just that group dynamic and then the dynamic and chemistry between those two is great um, and also though she brings forth like that her little you know her witch magic is what helps the reader get that glimpse into the past this is how this is kind of how Mark Lawrence has devised uh, a new kind of flashback. Mark Lawrence is kind of known for kicking ass with his flashbacks, so it's kind of cool that we see uh, a different spin on the flashback by him using this magic of Kara's. The other character that really blew me away was Alyssa Kendith. Now this is the Red Queen. So we've known of the Red Queen, but now we are gonna get to see her like we have not seen her before. We will get to understand why we call her the Red Queen, and it might not have anything to do with the fact that she's the Queen of Red March. Just trust me. Once you read this book, you'll know the scene I'm talking about. This scene was so powerful and so visceral and just so fucking awesome. Um, it certainly put Alyssa Kendith very high up in the running for favorite female character uh, for this year's Grimmies, I'll tell you that. The next thing I want to talk about is like the world building, the lore, the magic, just the everything that Mark Lawrence really adds to this broken empire world here in this book of the liar key i mean he has put so much extra stuff um into this world for the reader to get into um as a fan for of the broken empire this was like a dream come true so uh, like some of these pages were just like they were like hidden treasures you know what i mean like those ancient jedi texts <laughs> you know what i mean like it was just awesome to get into some of this stuff guys like i said you will get to expand like when you go back into the past you will get to see some of this builder tech um that you haven't been able to see before we will begin to flesh out those people those shadows behind the throne we will see witch magic um, we will open the we will open the broken empire here to the reader in, in places that we haven't really gone. You know, if you're a fan of the broken empire, most of the broken empire you have seen is destitute or just shitty and not that great. But I do feel like here in the Red Queen's War, we are getting to see somewhat of a brighter side of the broken empire. Um, and lo the liar's key certainly adds so much. Um, so much more, I guess, is what I'm trying. It, it adds a richness, you know what I mean? Because here we're really getting a taste of like the banking system and commerce, a prison system. I mean, uh, clockwork. Um, what would you call it? Clockwork technology. It's like it came after builder technology. Like I said, guys, this is really where the book shines. Mark Lawrence puts so much stuff in here that is amazing to read and just kind of sink your hooks into, um, especially if you're a fan of The Broken Empire. And speaking of The Broken Empire, if you've read at least up to book two, if you've read up to uh, King of Thorns, you will get to enjoy the crossover here that Lawrence has put in for the reader. Now, guys, I read Broken Empire many years ago, and I'm rereading it now. Um, so I took that route first. And I would love to know anybody that read the Red Queen's War first and then did Broken Empire and just how the crossover, you know, worked for you. Because personally, I've been loving the hell out of these, like, little uh, crossover moments. The one in here uh, literally had me jumping out of my seat. Like, cause the way it kind of, like, it was kind of like, oh, what's going on? And then when I realized what was happening and who was there, damn, it was awesome. It was just cool. You know what I mean? Like I said, if you're a fan of the Broken Empire, that crossover stuff that Lawrence threads in there as well is just, you know, you're going to enjoy it. Trust me. Now, as far as my two cents for the slow and the struggling, I would say that Mark Lawrence has not presented too many hurdles for you here. In fact, I would say go ahead and jump on in, especially if you've already read Prince of Fools. 
you really owe it to yourself to continue in this trilogy. Um, as far as, like I said, as far as hurdles, uh, Mark Lawrence does a great job of kind of, you know, giving you great description and just giving you lots of the goods and then streamlining the story at times, which making it, you know, it digestible and just, you know, it, it, it keeps the process moving along. He won't bog you down with shit tons of exposition. Um, the other thing, too, I guess, is Mark Lawrence is intelligent and he will throw some mind benders at you. So some of this stuff might make you think. Um, but I also feel that he gives you plenty of breadcrumbs along the way um, to kind of feed you the knowledge so when you get hit with the mind blaster, um, you don't get ejected from the seat. So, you know what I mean? Like, he he, he keeps the reader buckled in. Um, yeah, and I so I think, guys, if you're looking for something in the grimdark genre, especially with great, morally gray characters, because I do think that Jalen Kendeth is top-tier uh, morally gray character, this book is for you. All right, guys. Thanks for spending some time down here at the channel. And to Mark Lawrence, a gadoosh. Two thumbs up, man. Woo! The amount of just, like, <laughs> just the amount of stuff that you gave me. I feel like a kid in the candy store. And I had a hell of a time, uh, you know, trying to put this thing down. I really couldn't. Uh, and I'm just, thank you, sir. And for all of you guys wondering, you know, uh, I'm on time here. So I have just finished King of Thorns as well. So the review for that will be coming out soon. And I will be doing my spoiler videos for the Broken Empire as well. Um, and then, yeah, we will be wrapping this thing up. We will be doing the Wheel of Oshim or Oshim. Um, and then also the Emperor of Thorns. So look out for that, guys. I will be trying to get into that very soon, either maybe by the end of this month or early next month. So just keep an eye out for that. If you're new, please like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. As always, peace.